Good morning. Blessed Sunday. Pastor Shane here, Worship Without Walls. And this week, I have a special guest, uh, my son Darren. And he's here to help us with our hymnal readings and our scripture passages. And just join us for worship, word, and prayer this morning as we begin. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing. Yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, whose compassion illumined the world. Transform us into the likeness, the love of Christ, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. We open our red hymnal to 108 to start this morning. Glorify the Lamb of God. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes we are healed. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive the power and, ri and riches and wisdom, and the strength and honor and glory and blessing. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lamb. Lamb. We now turn to 205 in our red hymnal. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in pastures green. He leads me beside the still waters. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He restores my soul, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. <clears throat> Our opening hymn is He Has Made Me Glad. with thanksgiving in my heart I will enter his courts with praise I will say this is the day that the Lord has made will rejoice for he has made me glad he has made me glad oh he has made me glad oh rejoice for he has made me glad he has made me glad oh he has made me glad I'll rejoice for he has made Glad. We'll enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, oh, he has made me glad. I rejoice for he has made me glad. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I rejoice for he has made me glad. He's made me glad, oh. 
he has made me glad. I would rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, oh, he has made me glad. I'll rejoice for he has made me glad. I'll rejoice for he has made me glad. Please join us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into Hades. On the third day, he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn to 659 in our blue hymnal, Salvation by Grace. From his fullness we have re all received grace upon grace, for the law was given th through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Law came in to increase the trespass. But where sin increased, grace abound all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him, and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved, through faith and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not because of works, lest, lest any man should boast. The grace of God appeared for the salvation of all men, training us to renounce ir irreligion and worldly passions, and to live sober, upright, and godly lives in this world. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saves us, not because of his deeds done by us in righteousness, but in virtue of his own mercy, by the, way, by the washing of regeneration and renewal in the Holy Spirit. Which he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope to his eternal life. Amen. Amen. We turn now to the book of Psalm. To Psalm 99. The Lord reigns, let the people tremble. He dwells between the cherub cherub cherubim? Cherubim? Cherubim. Cherubim. Let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the, all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king the king's straight strength also loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God and worship his footstool. He is holy. Or what? Worship at his footstool. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel was among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke 
to them in the cloudy pillar. He kept his testimony. They kept his testimonies, and the or ordin ordinance ordinance ordin ordinance, and gave them you. He gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You were. You were to them God who forgives. Through you took vengeance on their deeds. Exalt the Lord our God and worship his at his holy hill, for the for the Lord is God our God is holy. Amen. Here ends our reading from the book of Psalm. Praise to you, O Christ. And our next hymn for worship is How Great Thou Art. How great thou art, how 
how great thou art and sings my soul my savior to be how great thou art Amen. And amen. Our next reading comes from the book of Exodus. Chapter 24. Verses 12 through 18. Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain, and I will be there. And I will give you tablets of stone and the law and commandments which I have written that you may teach them so Moses arose with his assistant Joshua and Moses went up to the mountain of God and he said to the elders wait here for us until we come back to you indeed Aaron and the her are with you if any man has a difficulty let him go let him go to them then Moses went up to the mountain and a cloud covered the mountain now the glory of the lord rested on mount Shin shinai and the cloud covered it six days and on the seventh day he called moses out of the midst of the cloud the sight of the glory of god was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of israel so moses went to the midst of the cloud and went up to the mountain and moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights Here ends our first reading for this morning. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, please join me in prayer. O oh God, as your Son drew apart to be in prayer with you, we offer our prayers for the transformation of the world and the church. Dear Heavenly Father, first and foremost, we lift up to you all of the sons and daughters of yours, all our brothers and sisters who are celebrating birthdays this weekend and this week. May they truly understand the blessing of another year of life, another day of breath, and another morning to wake up. Lord, we lift up to you our sons and our daughters, our brothers and sisters who battle day in and day out in their struggle with mental illness, we look to you, Lord, that your healing grace would shine down upon them and that they would be blessed by you. We lift up our sister Nora for her health. We ask that you continuously, Lord, shine your healing down upon her. We lift up our sister Robin and her family, that they would continue to be blessed by you. As they serve you, Lord, we lift up to you this world that ultimately you would help us to find peace, not just with ourselves, Lord, but with each other. No more shall we have brother versus brother and sister versus sister or brother versus sister and so forth, but may we be joined in hands, in love and in light the same love and light that your Son, Jesus Christ, brought to this world oh so long ago, Father. We ask that you revealed your glory and presence in your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ. And we ask that in receiving our prayers, that you reveal the glory and presence of your Spirit alive in this world today. Free us from all doubts, Father, and empower us to act as a transfigured people. We look to you, Lord, in Christ Jesus' name today. Amen and amen.
Our next hymn for worship is Majesty. Turn now to our blue hymnal to 661, Christian Love. If I speak in the tongues of men and of, and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. Cymbal? Cymbal? Cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, always hopes, always pers preserves. Perseveres. Perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we, prof and, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection, as in a mirror. Then, 
than we shall face to, that, that we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. And amen. We open our Bibles once more to the scripture reading from Second Peter chapter 1 verses 16 through 21. For we did not know cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitness of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the pro prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is any private interpreta interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Here ends our second reading for today. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue forth in prayer. Creator God of infinite patience, we see you in every plant that grows and blossoms, every creature that runs or flies, in mountains and sunsets, in every drop of rain that falls. Creation is not something that happened, but something that is happening every day. As we share our tithes and offerings today, we pray you, through Jesus, will continue the work of creation in us, that we might become more tolerant, more forgiving, more generous, and more loving. In that name, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you feel so compelled, compelled to tithe with us in this ministry, please visit our webpage. Click the link that's on our profiles. Visit our webpage and there's a couple ways you can do it, whether it's through shopping with us and any proceeds that come in from that go back into the ministry to help others in need, or there's a tithe button right in the shop where you can click on that tithe button and send in your donations to our ministry. Turn now once more into our Bible, to the Gospel of our Lord, which comes from the Gospel of Matthew today, chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. Okay. Now, after six day, now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to, the, to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased hear him and when the disciples heard it they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid but jesus came and touched them and said arise do not be afraid then they had lifted up their eyes they saw no one but jesus only 
Now, as they come down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. Here ends our reading from the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to Christ. And praise be to Christ, our Lord and Savior. And this leads me to our message for today. And our message I've entitled, Listen. And I first have to ask, in general, what does it mean to listen? For many of us, sometimes it's simple as just getting our attention. Because if you don't have our attention and we're not looking at you, we're not listening to you. We're too caught up in our phones, our video games, our devices. We're too caught up with the distractions of this world. The same distractions that lead us away from listening to God's calling to Christ, talking to us through prayer. We see multiple times through the Gospels how Christ separated himself from those distractions to talk to the Father. Christ went up on mountains. Christ went away on his own. And he did this to make sure that he could focus and listen to what the Father was telling him to do, what the Father instructed him to do. We see in our gospel today that Christ says, Assuredly I say to you, There are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So this is in a specific part of the gospel where the disciples ultimately want to honor Christ as Moses and Elijah would appear. But it says, Six days after Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Now imagine being his disciples. Imagine following him. Now he has done these miracles. He is healed. He has saved. He has rebuked demons and evil spirits from people. But imagine now, you're sitting there and he just becomes as bright as the sun, his face. And his garments that he's wearing, which are normal clothing for that time, becomes as white and bright as light. It's no longer just general cotton and linen colors or dirty linen. It is white, pure white. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Imagine seeing this. Imagine being a witness to this. My first question is, are you going to stay and continue to witness this? Or is this going to freak you out and put you in fear? Where you run away? Because his disciples chose correctly and they stayed and they witnessed. Because in verse 5, it says... While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed the disciples. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. <clears throat> or listen to him. Now think about this. What, who is this cloud? The cloud is the father. The cloud is God himself. Speaking to the disciples at this point in the scripture saying, listen to my son. I am well pleased with all that he has done. I love him and I need you to listen to him. Now, how many times do we have those awakening moments in our lives where we're like, oh, I need to start going to church. Oh, I need to start listening to the gospel of Christ. I need to start listening to Christ's words of love and light. 
I need to start listening to his words of being kind. Now I know right now in this world, that is a foreign concept, it seems like. In our own country, it seems like a foreign concept because we have laws being passed to actually persecute individuals. We have laws being passed that will sentence someone to death for a choice. Even if they didn't have control over the situation leading to that choice. And I say this not to get political. I say this because these laws aren't made out of kindness and of love in my belief. Because persecuting a fellow brother or sister is not trans actions of love. Again, I'm going to say this and I've said this before. We don't have to agree with the choices someone makes to love on them. We don't have to agree with the actions someone does to love on them. But when we see in our gospel today, in this occasion, where God is speaking from heaven and asking the disciples to listen to Jesus, God is asking us to listen to the words of Jesus as well today. God is asking us to take the scripture, the gospels, and to read them and to absorb them and to pray on them and to listen to them. Now, if you are so blessed to have a Bible that has the red letters of Jesus script speaking, listen to them. Because many times over, we are seeing Jesus speaking in light and in love, in kindness, in hope and in joy. Think about this for a second. He came down from heaven. He came from the richest place that we can go and ultimately was made poor, living off the land, born to a stable, a manger. Because ultimately his parents got turned away. To walking and calling people to follow him. And how many of you today, if you were asked to follow Christ, would follow him? And I don't mean following him where we sit there on Sunday and we're like, Hallelujah, praise Jesus, and so forth in worship. And we can sit there and we can sing and we can clap all we want. But the second Monday morning hits, we're what? We're back there persecuting people and claiming it's in the name of Christ. We're back there persecuting others and making laws and making commands and things that will actually cause more harm than good to those who need the help and protection the most. And I question you all this on this Sunday, that if Christ was here with us today in the flesh, in the living, and he was walking and he was healing and he was comforting, we know he sat with the tax collector. We know he sat with the prostitute. Okay? So he sat with the sinner. So I look to you all today and say, would he sit with your enemy? Would he sit with the woman who possibly had an abortion, forgiving her for her trespasses? Would he sit with members of the LGBTQIA plus community? You know, the same people that we want to persecute in the name of Jesus. Because when Jesus walked the earth many years ago, he sat with that tax collector who was persecuted by his own people. He called the tax collector to follow him. He sat with the prostitute. He sat with the women. And it was okay because he was saying that they were better than what they have done and their trespasses, and to him they were called beloved. They were loved, and they mattered. Because as we see in Scripture over and over again in the Gospel, it's that love that Christ 
gives. It's that love that Christ shares. And we can learn how to make our lives and the lives of others better by listening to the advice and the lessons that we find in the gospel. Whether we look to the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, we can find that love. We can find that light and we can find those lessons. But first, what we have to do is we have to use the one thing that God gave us and made us with was our ears and the ability to hear. We have to start listening. We have to start listening to the needs of the people around us. We have to start listening to the needs of our communities and we have to start listening to the needs of those who are suffering. Because just as Christ walked this world healing and helping, if we truly wanna be called Christians, there are songs that say that they will know we are Christians by our love. The problem is right now, what I see in this world is that they know we are Christians by how we persecute one another and how we use this scripture as the law and the way of judgment instead of using this scripture as the way of looking internally to change ourselves to walk and be as Christ. What I ask of all of you brothers and sisters today is that you will find comfort, you will find joy, you will find peace within the words of Christ. All we got to do is listen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today hopeful that the scripture passage from today as well as many others in the gospel from the words that your son Jesus spoke many years ago would help us. I look to you, Father, that you would open the ears of all of the world to hear your prophetic words as well as Christ Jesus. That we might be able to listen to what it is that we are called to do day in and day out as Christians, as followers of your son, Jesus Christ, as disciples in his name. I pray this to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Our final hymn for today is Lord of All Hopefulness. Give us, we pray, your peace 
in our hearts, Lord, at the end of day. Amen. And amen. Let us pray. O God of the covenant, the cloud of your splendor, and the fire of your love revealed your Son on the earth and on the mountain heights. Transform our lives in his image. Write your law of love on our hearts. Make us prophets of your glory, that we may lead others into your presence. Amen. And amen. Please join me in our doxology. Praise God from whom all presence flows. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace. Amen and amen.